Now, investing strategically in new technologies will continue to be the center of attention in achieving organizational goals. And organizations are under pressure to change the digital experience, not only for their customers, but also for their employees or other entities with whom they interact with. For both business and IT leaders, it's exciting to work with cutting-edge technology and it's up to IT leaders to know their marketplace, uh, that is business, customers and competitors to provide the right technology for the organization with the goal of introducing a value-added innovation. Now, business experts say business and technology working closely become fundamental to ensuring a perfect alignment to allowing the organization to lead in its market. And joining us now to discuss the importance of technology in organizational goals is Dr. Benga Odegbami, uh, the CEO and founder of You Verify Incorporation, a leading provider of digital identity management uh, that supports startups, private security companies, government agencies, fintech companies, banks, and other financial institutions. It's good to have you on Newsday. Thank you. Okay, so let's start with you know your initial assessments regarding the digital world and how uh, safe can you say? Uh, uh, I mean, how safe should we be in this digital world in today's modern era? Um, I think we do have the technologies, and locally we also do have the know-how. Um, I think the gap that we need to fill is the is the investment, uh, because the only people that are um, I think that are ready for today are the organisations that have made the appropriate investment. So that's why um, it seems that the only organization, some of the sector that uh, is digital ready is maybe uh, is like the fintechs mm. uh, because they have made significant investment. And if you also look at some of the things you hear in the news, the investment that is flowing to the country that's making news, most of it is going into that part of the uh, um, uh, industry. And it shows that they are already reaping the reward uh, of their investment. So I would say that um, um, as we have the tools, we have the people. Um, as long as the investment keep coming, I think we should be fine as a country. Indeed, interesting perspective. There. Now, let's talk about your uh, You Verifies free app, uh, UID, to help people store information uh, on the internet. How is it different from others? Um, uh, so, okay, most, most apps that are out there, they are more like a password managers or um, um, MFA, that's multi-factor authenticators. Mm. What, you, uh, what UID is, uh, is, is, it's more like digital identity manager. Uh, just imagine your wallet with all your cards in there. So the, the other apps you might, you might be like uh, SafePass or LastPass, they're like password in like a wallet. Mm. But this is your real ID in a wallet. They're like, it's a digital identity manager. And so if you want to assess a service, um, um, a, a, a service that does not require your identity, they just put your email and help you to store your password. So, you know, online now we have scammers and all those stuff. Yeah. They too use all those kind of things. But with UID, uh, you actually know the true identity of the person behind the screen. Because they will not be able to, when they want to sign up for a service, they have to actually use their real information, their identity. So for example, imagine uh, a bank or, uh, or, or a telco that want to sign up someone. They are pretty much sure if the person is signing up with UID, that is who they claim they are. Uh, so, it's, um, so that's the major difference between UID and what is available out there. Okay, now let's talk about, um regulation and regulatory bodies, how uh, involved are they? Or are you collaborating with any of them in any way to sort of make sure that this is uh, cohesive and uh, done properly? So what the regulators um, have done and, and government have done uh, over the years is to put some framework and policies around data privacy and PII. That is a personal uh, identifiable information. That means information that can use to trace you. So they put rules and regulation that meet global standards. Mm. Um, so for so many reasons, one of those reasons is also to drive innovation like what we are doing. And also to protect everybody that your information is secure when it comes to Nigeria. So they put those policies and rules in place. Right now we have a, we have a regulation, that's NDPR regulation of 2019, but they, uh, there's traction to now turn that regulation into an act. So that is going on. And, and, uh, and the regulators and government agencies are working uh, as much as they can do to make sure that act uh, is passed as soon as possible. And at, at UID, we are in compliance with all that regulation because we are focused not just Nigeria. If we can solve this problem in Nigeria, it's something we can actually export. Uh, so what we are doing is that from day one, we are ensuring that we are privacy by design and we are in compliance with all that regulations outside the country. Uh, yeah. Now, a global uh, phenomenon in terms of its challenges uh, on the issue of cybercrime in Nigeria 
and uh, potential for huge loss. How safe is UID when it comes to issues of hacking? Uh, remember, when it comes to the elections uh, regarding the U.S., we're still having issues there and uh, we're still hearing all sorts of, uh, uh, you know, mutants from that uh, aspect. But in your own uh, perspective, how safe is it? Okay, so one of the things we've done with UID is to make sure we don't have a copy of your data. Mm -hmm. And that is very, very important. We're the only platform that does that, at least to the best of my knowledge, in this part of the world. All your data reside with you. The same way your wallet is with you and it's always with you and you control the kind of money that goes in, yeah. Yeah, in and out of it. So your data is always with you. So what we've, what we've done is I've given a, technological, a technology platform for you to store your identity in a digital format and allows you to access services. So it's as secure as your phone. So the only way you can, um, anybody can have access to that data is if you give somebody your phone and the credentials to your phone. As long as your phone is secure with you, your data is secure, it's, it's, not, it's never with us. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, uh, so that's, we, 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 in, at UVFI, one of our policies are privacy by design. So we intentionally design it to inconvenience us for your own benefit. So we make sure we don't have access to that data because we believe any system is hackable, even military systems. But we put all the best world-class military-grade security, bank-grade security, to make sure that you put all the, everything that, is, that you can humanly do from day one there to make sure it's not hackable. But what we've done is that the major incentive for hackers is that they, are, they believe that there's data there. True. So what we've done is that we've removed that incentive and make sure that we don't even have your data with us. Oh, interesting. So let's actually talk about you verify for a second, you know, and its exact status, because from what I understand, um, the app is actually free and uh, it's also free to download and use as well. So I'm thinking, are you a not for profit organization? And if that's not the case, you know, how do you plan to generate revenue considering that it's free? OK, for, uh, for individuals, for everybody, it's free. And, um, and, and uh, as you verify, our vision is to empower people with their identity. And, that, and this is part of our vision. But however, this technology for us to keep running and also to make a, uh, uh, to keep growing, um, it is our business customers that want to uh, showcase their uh, business and opportunities to you. For example, uh, you want to sign up to be a driver for one of the on-demanding um, car alien services. You don't need to go to the office. You don't need to fill a form. You just put your information on the app, and you'll be able to sign up easily. So you don't fill any form. So that kind of car alien services is going to pay us to make sure they can use that technology. So that is how it works. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, you know, uh, we're still looking at uh, this kind of business. It's still at its infancy when it comes to our part uh, of the world. So let's talk about the challenges to surmount uh, for entrepreneurs going into the Nigerian tech ecosystem. Can you give us uh, more insight uh, regarding uh, that uh, prospect? Uh, I think the, 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 most, the biggest ordeal is, is oneself because um, it's persistent and you just have to, you know, the, you face the same or do every business face in Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, but if you are persistent and you are, you are focused on, on the vision and, and there's a value to be uh, there in your, in, your, in your vision, I think you should be fine. So I think we all face the same problem and, and it's something, it's always a, a subset of that that will help you to surmount it. Mm. Well, okay, go, go no, ahead. you go ahead. Okay. Okay. I, I was going to ask that uh, we're seeing a resurgence of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of tech printers out there adopting solutions, apps for solutions, and we're seeing that growing in Nigeria. So what do you, how do you view the market in the next 10 years to come? Uh, don't forget, our biggest resource is people in Nigeria. Indeed. It's actually never oil. Mm -hmm. And because we have that volume, uh, historically, we've not converted that resource into, um, into our advantage. Mm -hmm. So what is happening now with the advent of uh, knowledge-based economy, digital economy, that you can learn anything online? So we have um, thousands, probably hopefully millions of youths out there that are learning and, being, and empowering themselves. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they can take their idea and turn it into a product that has value. So, and, that is what, and that's what you see. And, and, and I believe that's also what the world sees in Nigeria. It's not just turning the product, uh, an idea into a product, mm -hmm. also ability to also appreciate a product. Because if they are digitally uh, empowered, mm -hmm. they are able to consume that product. And we have the volume in this country, and there's no better way to, um, uh, to exponentially increase our economy and grow our economy uh, other than digi uh, di di uh, digitalizing it.
All right. Okay, I want to quickly go back to the UID platform, you know, and some of the things that you said earlier on made to so much sense, especially with regards to uh, data protection. But assuming that there's a user who no longer wishes uh, to be on the service or on the platform, uh, what then happens to the information that is contained on, 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 on there? Okay, so um, because, like I said, you have full control. One of those controls is your ability to delete your account. And, and you, you raise it completely and nobody else will have access to it. And also, this is it's not just that, because you, we, we went a step further. Because you might have signed up for a service that now have access to your information. For example, um, your BVN. Maybe you apply to, uh, for a loan. You can actually tell them using the app to delete your information. Because it is your right as a Nigerian, based on the NDP regulation, that you should be able to tell people that have your data that they should delete it. Mm. Um, but what has happened in the Nigeria are not well educated or empowered enough to know that that's their right. I was just going to say, how are they supposed to know and is it stated to sort of notify them? Yes, actually. Okay. It's all in the privacy policy, but none of us read those fine prints. So, but it's your right to say, look, I don't want you to keep my information and I want you to delete it. What one of the things UID allows you to do is to be able to communicate with organizations that have access to your information to delete it in a very easy way. Just swipe and they will have to delete it. Mm. Interesting. I, I hope you can just answer this in 30 yeah. seconds. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, are you also working to launch in the Nigerian marketplace or to boost cybersecurity and make Nigeria more attractive for foreign investors? Uh, yes, mm. because what UID is going to do is bring a lot more people mm. into the digital space. And of, of course, when you bring the lot more in, in a secure manner, mm. so that creates more opportunities for businesses and also hopefully create more investment and more, even more products that will think that will um, use UID uh, as, as part of their go-to-market strategy. All right, okay. fantastic. It's a perfect way for us to uh, end our conversation. Thank Been you. interested in hearing from you, uh, Dr. Benga Odegbami, yes. uh, you verify CEO. Mm -hmm.